Hi everyone, this is lesson two and a continuation of photo stitch one. If you have not watched the first lesson, you need to go back and watch it because I will not go over what I covered in the first video. I'll delete the image that's on the screen by choosing delete. I'll go to photo stitch one, I'll choose color and I'll go into the directory under Documents, PE Design, Sample, Layout, and Editing, and Photo Stitch. Yours could be My Documents or something else if you named your documents a different name. And these are the images that Brother has created, and I want to choose the squirrel. I'll open up the squirrel. And the first thing that you notice are the masks over here on the left-hand side. The system remembers the last five masks that you created, and this can be from other images as well. The original mask that appears on the screen is this rectangular mask when you open up Photo Stitch. You can adjust this mask, as I mentioned in the first video, both inward and outward without drawing it proportionally because it's what this is doing is masking a portion of the photo that you, you are going to use. But if you go to the second screen, which is looking to fit this design on your des design page, and I'll go back to my settings. I have a 100 by 100 hoop. If I want a larger hoop, I can select that right now. I'll choose cancel. But if I try to move this in from the left or up and down without using the proportional the dragging from the corners you can definitely see that I've skewed this and this is one skinny squirrel I wish I could dye it like this I'll choose previous and what I'll have to do is cancel and delete this and go back and reselect my photograph so I'll go back and select the photograph that I had chosen previously, and I'll open it up, and we'll talk about some of these other masks. The mask actually creates a frame around an object. Now you can adjust these masks as well, uh, but you don't have the ability to add nodes or anything else to this other than uh, the, the ability to move that mask up or down on the screen by holding down your left mouse button. You'll see that you are positioning it either higher or lower on the design. There are several shapes that you can choose from and you may like one of these. And uh, these are the shapes that are actually built into the software. The um, five that were created in the past are the, the clipping masks that are created by the system. Now when you use the clipping mask, the software tries to figure out what to do. And the reason it's so confused on this is it created so many clipping masks before as I was going through preparing for this video. So what I'll do is I'll choose one of the previous masks, but I want to show you how I can edit this. I can edit this mask if I go back to previous um, and go to clipping mask, I can edit it. And to do that, if I'm, I can see here it's omitted his ear and his feet and his tail, it's all missing. So if I want to add those in, I can draw a line around the areas that are missing. And then I can let go of the mouse, pick up my pen again, and hold down my left mouse button and go around some other areas. And each time I can do that. Now if I get something that I don't like, I can erase it by using the eraser and this goes back and, and forth over it. Or I can use the minus, which would exclude the area. So if I drew this and I don't want that, I can use the minus and go over that and co cover it up. And that will exclude it. Um, likewise, I can 
choose the trash can, it's going to remove all markings if I need to start again. So I'll just use the pencil and I'll quickly go around the outside and pick up the things that are missing from this little squirrel that I want to include in the detail. And we'll go ahead and look at this. I'm not real thrilled with what I just did then. So I can draw another line like this. And I believe it'll pick up everything that I have on the outside. If I turn the the show hide off, you don't see the lines that I drew. Now if I choose update preview, I'll be able to see if I've included that mask outline in the areas that I want and I have, so I'll choose OK. What this does is it draws nodes and you'll notice that there are several where I use my pen. The original mask that's created by the software has singular nodes and so you can actually move these around as well. When you select a node you can, cannot, um, you can delete it by pressing the delete key to uh, smooth it out a little bit if you want to, but we'll leave it like that. And then I want to show you something else. We'll look at Image Tune. Image Tune allows you to sharpen your image to increase or decrease the brightness, increase or decrease the contrast, or increase the color saturation or decrease it. If we move the sharpness to the most extreme, you will see that what you're ending up with is something that has a lot more um, of the darker colors and it's really much more like an artistic image. I'm going to move this back to the original and I can increase the contrast a little bit if I want and if I want to increase the color saturation I can do this here or I can reduce it. If I reduce it all the way to the left I'll have a grayscale image. I'm going to move it back into the center and we'll leave it here and choose OK. Now we'll choose Next. If this design is not fitting within my design page, I can adjust it by holding the corner and dragging proportionally to fit this within my design page or I can choose Fit to Page. As I showed you earlier, you wouldn't want to use the insides or the sides or top and bottom unless you really wanted to skew a picture and make yourself look slimmer. We'll choose next. And now you can see it only has 10 uh, thread colors and these are isocord thread colors. And I want to show you a little bit about what run pitch does whenever you change run pitch. I'm going to change it to 4.5 which is not something that I would use normally on something like this and, and update the preview and you see you lose detail because you don't have as many stitches. I'll move it back to 2.5 and I'll update the preview and you can see that I have several more stitches and a lot more detail. If I increase uh, this up to fine and update the preview, I'm adding significantly more stitches to this and you can see what the appearance will be. If I move it down to coarse and I update the preview, you can see that I've lost uh, quite a bit of the detail. One of the other things that I didn't discuss in the other video was adding a mask. A mask is simply an outline around the outside and it forms a zigzag stitch. We'll leave this on here so you can see it. I don't really care for it, but I'll show you what it looks like and in the event you want to add a mask. You can also select from candidates. What the system does is it selects nine different settings and where you are is in the middle for you to choose from. If you decide you want to choose a different setting, you choose it and choose OK. 
Now if I go ahead and choose finish, this is what my design will look like. And as I told you, it creates this zigzag stitch around the outside. If I want to select that outside zigzag stitch, let me click off and select it. I can actually change this to a different type of stitch. For instance, if I wanted it to be a stem stitch and to change the color, and we'll go to the color of it and we'll change it to a green. And this may not, it's not the same thread chart, but you can see what you could do use, using that outside line in your design. We'll go ahead and select this and delete it. But before I do, I want to show you that this design would be 16,000 stitches. This next one, I'll choose photo and I'll choose this copy of a picture of my grandson. And looking at this, this is much larger than the dimensions uh, that is suitable. So this should have higher quality. We'll choose open. And I selected this mask earlier. I'll go ahead and use this mask and I'll choose next. And we'll go ahead and choose fit to page. And you can see the size that this is going to be. And we'll choose next. And you can see that you don't have a lot of detail in here. I'm going to go on and increase this so that I get more detail. So if I'm not going to bring it up that far, I'll reduce this to 2.5. And then I'll update the preview and look at it. If I'm not satisfied with it, then I'll go ahead and add more thread colors. So I'm going to increase this to 20 and update the preview. That gives me much more detail for this photo. In fact, if I didn't mind changing threads since this is my grandson, I can increase more thread colors to see what it looks like and go ahead and finish this. Now I want you to see though what this looks like whenever we look at the stitch count. This is 18,161 stitches. So it would take quite a while to, to sew out. And looking at this, I don't know, there's his glasses are so much the same color as the shirt. This might be a case where if those were two different colors that were selected, I might want to choose a different color for his shirt or for his glasses. And this is one of the things that you'll need to think about. I'll go ahead and clear, delete this from the screen. For the second option, I've chosen sepia. And in this option, I've chosen 10 thread colors. And depending on the thread that I use right here, it's really going to change the look. So if I want to choose add, and I go to this thread chart, and I look for something that's in a sepia tone, like and this almost looks green, but let's just say we chose this instead, and we remove this color, and we update the preview, you can see how it changes the look of this design. So sepia tone is one of those things that you can use to really get some artsy looking um, photo stitch. I'll cancel this, we'll go back and we'll choose gray. When we choose gray, we're obviously going to get a palette of gray tones.
and these are the colors that we would get in the gray tone. Now, I, you notice that it remembers this one that I reserved and added before. I actually want to remove that color, so I'll select it and remove it, and I'll update the preview. And this is what the gray tones would look like. I could obviously add auto select and we'll tell it to do 15 and update the preview. And you can see that I have a little more detail on this, which could be an interesting uh, photo stitch. We'll choose cancel. And this time we'll choose mono. Mono, it would be something that may not work for everything. And it depends on what you have in your background. And you would probably want to tune your image so that you have a lot of contrast in it. And you may need to adjust some of the brightness of it so that you have some lights and you have some dark and the reason I'm doing that is because when we go through and look at this we're going to have a singular thread color so you have to ask yourself if this is what you want and this looks like somewhat like pen and ink and it is fairly artistic and you can change the color if you wanted to change this to a different color of I hope this gives you a better understanding of Photo Stitch 1. In the next lesson, I'll continue with Photo Stitch 2. Thank you for your time today.